participants in these negotiations are the United States, France, the United Kingdom, Germany, China, Russia. Even though we're the negotiators, one of the negotiators, the negotiations infect the entire world, as I've said. This letter is a hard slap in the face of not only the United States, but our allies. And we welcome you back for the third and final hour of America's Forum for this Tuesday. Alongside Miranda Khan, J.D. Hayworth here. Miranda, we just heard there from Senate Democrat leader Harry Reid calling a letter from 47 Republican senators to the leaders of Iran, quote, a slap in the face. Yeah, 47 senators signed that letter, J.D. It warns Iran that any nuclear deal not approved by Congress could easily be reversed by the next president. The letter comes as world leaders and Tehran try to reach an agreement this month to stop Iran's nuclear program in exchange for easing sanctions. Well, joining us for an in-depth analysis of this situation, retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin. He's also the Executive Vice President of Family Research Council and a contributor for The Stream. So, General, we appreciate your time. How might this letter affect the nuclear talks with Iran? To begin with, I'd like to know who the seven Republicans were that did not sign this letter. I also would like to say, if anybody takes Harry Reid seriously now, uh, it would be a surprise to me. I think that this is, uh, was necessary because this administration has demonstrated routinely that it will bypass the Congress, that it will usurp the provisions of our Constitution in order to fulfill its own agenda. This is a very, very serious situation with Iran. This is an existential threat. This is a threat not only to America, but to the entire world. And I'm delighted to see 47 members of our Senate uh, tell the Iranians that no matter what the deal is, if we don't review it, we will stand in opposition to it. General, what do you have to say about Harry Reid saying that this is a slap in the face to our allies, though? Again, I say, who takes him seriously anymore? I mean, look. Harry Reid has been one of the most nefarious Senate leaders, uh, certainly in my lifetime. Harry Reid has uh, his own agenda, and uh, it is very consistent with that of the administration. Uh, Harry Reid is, uh, is no longer credible, I think, in the eyes of most Americans. And uh, so I don't take uh, what he said there very seriously. About two and a half minutes remain in this particular portion of the program, General. So let me ask you about something that has... Uh that has been reported, I believe, in the L.A. Times about side agreements that the United States has worked out unilaterally with Iran. What do you know of that, uh, given the fact that the administration might be involved in those side agreements? Are those a real source of concern? Well, they are for me, particularly when you consider that uh, part of that includes allowing the Iranians to keep 6,500 centrifuges. Listen, uh, be very clear, centrifuges can be used for nuclear power, but to fire up the Bashir uh, nuclear plant alone would take 100,000 centrifuges. So why would we allow them to keep centrifuges? Why would they want them? Because they are building a nuclear weapon. They also will not be required to, uh, to shut down the Eric uh, nuclear plant. Uh, they will not be required to send any of their uh, enriched uh, uranium to a third country, caretaker country. Those are all things that we expected that were going to be part of the deal. And now we're hearing from, I think, fairly credible sources that none of that's going to happen. So I am very concerned about these side deals and about the fact that Iran is going to continue to have the wherewithal to make a nuclear warhead. And, and, and that's going to happen. General, would any deal be acceptable? Uh, yeah, I think there would be a deal that would be acceptable, which would be that they shut down all enrichment of uranium, that they have UN inspectors from the IAEA into any facility that they want to go in, uh, then I would be inclined to say that's a, that's a deal we can live with. About a minute remains, General, in this particular portion of our program. Prime Minister Netanyahu, in his speech to a joint uh, session of Congress, seemed to suggest that Israel could live with a deal if Iranians denounced 
terrorism and uh, denounced uh, or stepped away from calling for the destruction of Israel. 30 seconds remaining. Would that be plausible for you in terms of a deal? Look, it's the same thing that uh, he said when he said he would uh, be willing to uh, negotiate with the Palestinians. He knows what the answer is. They're not going to agree to that. No more than the Palestinians will agree to uh, to any of the things that uh, he has offered to negotiate with them on. It's uh, it's 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 for publicity. General Jerry Boykin, we thank you for your insights right here. We're going to ask you to remain with us, and when we come back, more candid assessments from General Jerry Boykin. Stay tuned. America's Forum continues. Well, ISIS is becoming a franchise, and Boko Haram just joined the franchise, just like the people in Libya who were beheading all those Egyptian Christians have joined the franchise, uh, just like some of the people in Yemen and some people in Afghanistan are joining the franchise. It's happening all over the world of radical Islam, uh, and I think it's a dangerous development. Welcome back. And uh, Miranda, some pretty strong words there from Christopher Dickey, the foreign editor of the Daily Beast, yeah. following this announced alliance between two very dangerous groups, ISIS and Boko Haram. The franchise, as he referred to it, the alliance is creating speculation about the strength of both groups. Some experts claim the alliance, or as we just heard, franchise, is a defensive move as both groups try to find a way to push back. Mm. Well, rejoining us to continue the conversation now is retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, who also serves as Executive Vice President of the Family Research Council. As well, he is a contributor to the stream. General, what do you think Boko Haram's pledge to ISIS really means? Yeah, I think that it's what they're doing is they're signaling their uh, acceptance of uh, ISIS as being the leader of the new caliphate. See, ISIS is not striving to create a caliphate. ISIS has created a caliphate. They've declared a caliphate. That's the reason they want to be called the Islamic State rather than ISIS or, or even ISIL. Uh, and now Boko Haram is recognizing them as the leader of the caliphate and Boko Haram is saying we're part of it. And uh, I think you're going to see others do exactly the same thing as they see this caliphate coming together. And remember, the caliphate is a theological issue with them. It's a super state that has to be created. Uh, now, depending on whether you're Sunni or Shia, you know, your, 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 your theology varies a little bit. But certainly for these Sunnis, they believe very much in the caliphate. And their last caliphate really was the Ottoman Empire, and they believe they have recreated now the foundations of a new Ottoman Empire. Do you think we're at risk of this franchise, caliphate, empire, whatever you want to call it, of it spreading and continuing to come further and closer to the U.S.? There's no question. Uh, it's only a matter of time until probably in the tri-border area of uh, South America, you're going to see them declare allegiance to uh, ISIS, which is a signal that the caliphate extends transoceanic. Uh, that's not going to happen right away, but it's only a matter of time until that's going to happen. And there are there are uh, Islamic elements, jihadist elements down in that tri-border region there that uh, are, are kind of looking for the time when they can do exactly that. Right now they're they're low key, but uh, you'll see it happening. I think all across North Africa, you'll see more and more of the. Uh, Middle Eastern countries under great pressure from uh, internal groups that really want to declare their loyalty to ISIS. You've outlined uh, their plans for expansion, yet, General, there are some who claim that ISIS is in fact weakening. Is there any sign of that that you've seen? Well, to begin with, you've got a guest coming on that uh, Eric Stuckelbeck, who is a great friend, and I think he knows as much about this as anybody. If Eric Stuckelbeck says they're weakening, I believe it. If anybody else says it, there is absolutely no proof that they are getting weaker. In fact, the Egyptians say now that there may be as many as 150,000 fighters in ISIS. That doesn't sound like they're getting weaker if they've gone from 30,000 to potentially 150,000 fighters. I think they're growing in strength and uh, they may have some internal 
squabbles among the leadership, but I don't think they're getting any weaker. I think they're growing in strength, particularly as you see these franchise elements uh, joining ISIS. General, in the minute and a half we have remaining, let's switch gears for a moment and talk about what's going on in Iraq. According to reports, um, they are days away from retaking the city of Tikrit from ISIS. Why is it so important that Iraqi forces retake this city, Saddam Hussein's uh, hometown? Well, uh, you know, let's start with the premise that uh, they're going to take it. And if they are going to take it and they are going to be successful, which would be a little bit of a surprise, honestly, because they've, in the past, they've not been willing to stand and fight against ISIS. It's very important because it's psychologically, uh, I think that it sends a message to the Sunni tribes. The Sunni tribes are very important now in this fight against ISIS because these tribes, uh, just like they did back when the U.S. had troops on the ground there, if the Sunni tribes rise up against ISIS, it could be a very powerful force against the the ISIS takeover of the entire country. So I think if uh, if the security forces of Iraq are successful in taking back Tikrit, the, the you know the city of Saddam's birth, then I think that it would send a very strong, powerful message to the Sunni tribes that uh, they can be part of a victory over ISIS if they choose to do so. Retired Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, sir, we thank you for your insights. And for more on the terror threat that ISIS represents and its rise to power, get the book Rise of ISIS, a threat we cannot ignore for a deeply discounted price, plus the Newsmax special report. We're coming back.